Okay, so good afternoon, good evening, <laughs> and uh, welcome to the introductory lecture le lesson about uh, Python. I'll try to be less boring than possible. It's a quite boring uh, lecture, this one, so forgive me. And uh, okay, basic element uh, about Python. We then, during the course, uh, build upon this, uh, and uh, uh, we go further, we go over this thing that we see today in this uh, one hour and something. Uh, two question, first, who already knows C, C programming language. Thanks. And Python, who already knows Python? Something, okay. Well, um, okay, you already see that Python is an interpreted language, languages. That is, uh, there are two ways to interact with Python. One is the interactive way in the console and the other is the non-interactive way in uh, the editor. We will use uh, Eclipse with PyDev uh, for developing in Python. That is uh, this one. Okay, so let's start from creating a new project. I'll try to follow the slides and not follow the slides, but everything that I said uh, will be present in the slide and or on GitHub, so be confident. A new PyDev project, we can call it uh, cla in class. Okay, and then we can create a PyDev module called uh, intro. Okay. Uh, Python program are text file, plain text file. So you have an editor, a text editor, you can program Python. Um, each line of a Python program, as in many program, is a statement. So the first one here, the first line here, is a statement that is composed by an instruction, print one plus one, that is two, just in case, and an line comment here, a comment that is valid for one line that starts with the hash symbol here, and then there is some text, so whatever you want. The inline comment could be also put near an instruction to better specify what the instructions say. So, for example, print one plus one. If we save this and run this, incredible, we see two printed here. And then we can comment uh, the result uh, should be two. And this is a comment, an inline comment. Multiline comment are possible in Python. We start from editing and formatting the document and then we move on function and uh, variables and whatever. Multiline comment uh, are possible in Python and could be written by starting with three double quotes, writing some multiline text, and then other three double quotes to complete the, the comment part, or with single quote, three single quote to start and finish in Python, single quote or double quote are almost equivalent for text for string. Okay. So the first thing that you should notice coming from a C background is that uh, if you would like to write this program in C, you have to add several, some other lines. For, for example, 
you can write printf and uh, click run on, a, on C and then execute it to on the, on the console? No. You have to at least to put include in the first line, int main, open and close parentheses, open braces, printf, uh, open parentheses, uh, etc. To have the same result. Here is one line. Okay? And the second thing, this instruction is missing something. If, if it, it would be, a, sorry, if it uh, would be a C function, what we would, would we put at the end of the line in C? The semicolon. In Python, each instruction is concluded by the end of the line. A new line, a new instruction, no semicolon. And then another strange thing, parentheses, if print is a function and is not, but if is a, a function, we would have the parentheses, but print is not a function in Python 2. In Python 3, yes, in Python 2, no. Again on formatting, in Python we don't have braces. We don't write int open braces some code, close braces. In Python, we will have indentation. Block of code, imagine this as a function, int main, open close parentheses. In C, you will write open braces here and open uh, close braces here. Here, you write colon and then indentation. All the block with the same indentation is a block of code that pertain to the function to the conditional to the instruction that start the ten with colon. The indentation is mandatory in Python. A wrong indentation is a syntax error in Python. We will use a, um, a convention during this course that a one indentation is not a tab is not two spaces, it's not 11 spaces, it's exactly four spaces. That is the standard in Python that is already uh, implemented and available in PyDev. So if in PyDev you press tab, you will move of four spaces, not a tab. Moreover, PyDev will exploit automatic indentation. So it move the cursor in the best position we can say. So if we write if one is minor than two, it's automatically indented by one, two, three, four spaces. That is all we need to program. Keywords. These are all the keywords of Python 2. What are keywords? in a programming language. What's the meaning of a keyword in a programming language? Some of these are keyword or in C. If is a keyword in C. Else is a keyword in C. Uh, for, while, everything you already know. Why these are all together in this slide? They do specific stuff, yeah, <laughs> and they, yes, um, keywords are reserved words that uh, are already used by Python and that you cannot overwrite or use in any other place, in any other way than the default. So you cannot define a variable that is named if. You can use if for a conditional, structure, but not for a variable. You cannot redefine a function that is named print, because print is a keyword, is a reserved word in Python. These are keywords in Python 2.7, Python 3 is quite a little bit different. Uh, you are not required to learn by memory all of these, obviously. But you have to know that they exist. 
Uh, another thing that you may notice, if I define a variable, name, number, <laughs> equal one, this is a variable in which I assign the number one to the variable number with uh, great fantasy. And respect to C, what do you notice? You can write one, a thing like this in C. No, what is missing is according to the C. The type. Okay, this is a, a Python is a dynamically typed language. So the type of any variable is uh, uh, understand, is understood, is uh, recovered by the interpreter. It's not declared explicitly. You cannot write int number. You don't write char, open square, 10, name. You write number equal one, name equal Luigi, directly. The type is uh, derived from the content of the variable. Okay, let's start from basic things, math. Mathematical operator. Quickly. Well-known operator, plus between two numbers, perform the sum, minus the subtraction, slash the division, asterisk the multiplication, Double asterisk is the exponential. So it's two, double asterisk four is two at the power four. Percent is the reminder of the division, the module. And then we have the comparison operator, less than one is minor than two. Yes. The, grade, the, the major greater than, the less than equal, minor equal and the greater than equal, major equal. Example. Okay, let's concentrate here. Okay, forgot everything else in this file. Okay, this is a, a program that uh, prints something many times, uh, it's a program written for a farmer that would like to count his child, uh, sorry, his chickens, not children, his chickens. Uh, he has uh, two types of chickens, the hens and the roosters, but the man, the person that count these, uh, these chickens uh, does not give to the farmer the, num the exact number. He doesn't say you have three hens or 20 roosters. It say you have 25 plus 30 divided by six hands. And the farmer write a Python program to perform this calculation. Wow. Okay. So this is the result. I will not count my chickens, hands 30, and rooster 97. Okay? Hence 30, rooster 97. This line prints, hence 30, print. What is included in these uh, double um, quotes? Then a comma, that is a um, concatenation for the print statement, that insert a space after the word before the comma, and then the result of the operation of the content of the variable if there is a variable. Why 25 plus 30 divided by six give 30? Why? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's following the road and the first operator is here the division, exactly. So he is uh, the division, so it performs 30 divided by six, and then it will sum 25. The order is PEMDAS, parentheses, exponential, multiplication, division, abstract, uh, addition, and subtraction. So first of all, Python 
will perform the operation in parentheses, then the exponential, then the multiplication, and so on. In case of same precedence, sorry, in case of the same operator, the precedence is from the left to the right. So three plus two plus one is performed three plus two, and then the result plus one. Other convention. We already see that variables are written lowercase, multiple variables with multiple words are written lowercase joined by an underscore. So for example, my underscore number. Okay? This is true for variable, for functions. Here, my function is my underscore function, and my second variable is my underscore second underscore variable, all small cases. For constants, you can write or all capital with underscore between words or all lowercase with underscore between words. And for classes that we will not see today, with study caps, that is, each word has a capital letter and they are joined together without any space, without any symbol, without nothing. We discovered before that variable types are not declared in, uh, in Python, and the Python interpreter perform a runtime check of the type. So the same variable can be used in several points for hosting several content during a program. So here, for example, I have the variable a that is assigned the number one, and then I print a, and I will print one. Then I can use the same AE for hosting a floating point number. And printing this floating point, simply printing them, will give a floating point variable. It's not will truncated to an int. I also use the same variable for a string. Notice here that string in Python, as I said before, for the quotes are, can be identified by a single quote or by a double quote, no difference. This is a string, my name, in the same identical way that this is a string, the same string of this, it's not different. The type can be checked with the interpreter, it's right here. So for example, a equal one, two, three, four, print, type of A, or A, B, equal, and then print type. Type is a function that will print the recognized type of the variable in Python. The first one is an integer, and the second one is recognized as a string. Now, something um, let me do a little bit of a zoom. Something interesting. What do you expect from the execution? of these two line of code. If we print A here, not the type, here, and then we print A here, the result, the printed number, will be the same, will be different, different how? Question, reply. The first one will print, the first print here will print, yes. The second one, the same as before. Let's check. This is a, well, this is an online tool that is named Python Tutor that uh, 
uh, show the execution of a Python script or a Java program line by line and show what happens in memory. Okay, so we will see here, but also the printed here of the execution. So A, we see that in memory, the variable A has associated the one, two, three, four. And then if I print uh, A, we'll see one, two, three, four, as expected. A with zero, one, two, three, four, in memory puts 668 and it print 668. Why? What, what's the correlation between 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 668? No. It's translated to another represent, numeric representation. Yes. Octave representation. Pay attention, when you print, when you use the Clara variable with a zero before a number, some number between zero and seven, it translates to an octave representation. I cannot write A equal zero eight, because in the octave representation, the eight does not exist. The number are zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Stop. It give an error. These or the invalid token. But in memory, Python translate the number from the octave representation to the decimal representation that is 668. So pay attention when you write number, do not put a zero before the number. Just in case. Again, on variable. We see here a program that defines some variable. In the first one, it put number 100. In the second one, the number 4.0. In the third one, the number 30. Passenger is equal to 90. Cars driven is equal to cars minus driver, drivers. That is, take the content of cars and subtract the content of drivers. In cars driven, the exact number of drivers, and so on. These are number, nothing strange. Variable contains number, mathematical operation upon numbers. Strings. Let's move. String as I said before, are defined by double quotes or single quotes. No difference, a little bit preference towards single quotes. But in some cases, not possible <coughs> or good to use a single quote. They are immutable. Once defined, they cannot be changed. They can be copied and then change the copy during the copy. Each character in a string has a number that is an index so if I, if I write a variable name with my name, and then I say print name d0, the expected output will be al, exactly. Let's check. Okay. Mathematical operator cannot be applied to string except the plus and the asterisk. The plus perform a concatenation between string without spaces, without anything, to string together. And the asterisk repeat the string a certain number of times. So one as multiplied by three is one, 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 three time. Another example. We'll see a lot of examples. So 
we would like to describe this person, Anthony Stark. We'll notice here one strange things in the first line here about string. I have put a double quote, Tony, inside a single quote. I cannot put, I cannot write this, because according to Python, the string starts here, and the string stops here, and then this Tony is nothing that can be used to put together the string. So, one way to avoid this problem is to mix the two quotes, single quotes or double quotes. One, the outer quotes, and the other, the inner quotes. Or you can backslash the inner quote. In this way, Python recognizes that, that, that this is not a, a string terminal, but is a real charter to be printed. Okay, let's go back to the more clear version. Then we define that uh, this man is 45 years old, has a height, weight, uh, color of his uh, eyes, uh, white teeth, and uh, it's brown hair. And then we print. Let's talk about percent %s, percent %name. Here, percent %s, here, percent %name. Percent %s, here, percent %d, here, and then we see percent %r after, or percent %f, our specifier. Python, when encounter one of these, percent %s, look after the string, in this case in a print, for a percent. If it find something after another percent, and this something is a variable, try to take the content of this variable and put inside the string. So percent %s, look up name, name is Anthony Tony Stark, so Python will print, let's talk about Anthony Tony Stark. The same happens here, percent %d. Percent %d stands for digit, so it expects an integer number, and the 8 is an integer number. The same after here, and here we have something strange, respect to before. We have two specifier in one string. He got percent highs, percent has highs, and percent has here. And then we have this structure, open parenthesis, one item, comma, another item, comma, another item, comma, another item, and so on, how long as you want. This is called tuple, tuple is written. Here, Python performed the same operation as before. It found a first percent %s and looked for a percent after the string. It found it and said, okay, give me what is after the percent. After the percent, there is a tuple of two elements. So the first one, it takes the first one and put here the first one. And then it found another percent %s and it found the other the second element of the tuple, and put it to the second element of the tuple. Here, you can see that the tuple could be of multiple elements, and that each element could be also a combination, a sum, a subtraction, or whatever. In this case, this is the sum between age, age, and weight. Okay, here is written what I said. Percent R, uh, percent F as a specifier is for floating point number, uh, and percent R is a raw representation of the element. 
So if here we put the percent R, we will see, we will see, let's talk about single quote, Anthony, double quote, Tony, double quote, star, Stark, single quote. It prints also the single quotes before and after the string because it, that one is the string representation in Python. The raw string is represented by a quote starting and an ending quote. With percent %s, we'll have only the content of a string. Uh, here are the sequences, as I said before, I cannot use this format, double quote, I said, double quote, hello, double quote, double quote, because it gives an error. I can escape the inner double quote with a backslash, and then I can also use this backslash n to start a new line, and a double backslash to print a backslash. Okay, right now our program are quite um, annoying. You fill some variable and then you print the content of this variable. What if we would like to ask the user to insert some data? In Python, we can do this with the instruction row input. The instruction row input wait for the input of a user in the console and then gives back the content, what the user type in a variable as a string always as a string. So in this case, how old are you? This input take a, a number, and in Python it will be represented as a string. In fact, here we print it with percent %s. That is the specifier for the string. We can also Here, we'll, we will print, print, how old are you? That is the question for which the input uh, has to be replied, and then we store the result. We can also put that question inside the row input method in this way, and then we can also say to the row input method, okay, I don't want a string, I want an integer. I want a floating point, I want something else, and uh, this is possible with this, for example, int. In this case, the raw input will be converted to an integer. And in fact, we can use uh, the percent %d specifier to print uh, this, uh, this value. And uh, the type of this variable is in effect uh, an integer. So let's try just to do something. Okay. How tall are you? What's your name? And we can see that this number is effectively an integer, and the other is a string as row input, give the output in this way. Python can also receive command line parameters. So when you start a program, you can type the Python, one moment,
you can type a Python, not in this way, the name of the, the script of your program, dot pi, that is the extension Python program, and then some uh, parameter that can be take and give to the program. How? Through the sys.argv module and argument, where sys is called a module. A module is a collection of different variables, different functions, different uh, classes, and argv is the argument variable. So, for example, we take argv, we'll import argv from the module sys, and then we'll say, okay, everything, I expect here three parameters after the name of the script. So I say to Python, everything that is in this argv, please unpack this and put its content in these four variables where the first one is the script name, the program name, the second one is the first parameter, the third one is the second parameter, and so on. If we started this, um, this program, we say that the script is called client underscore parameter dot pi, the first variable is one, the second variable is two, and the third variable is three as a number as reported here. So these argv take everything on the <coughs> command line after the Python command and unpack in all the variables you give to it. One, two, 11, no problem. If you call this same program without any parameter, this unpack is not possible because nothing is here except the script name so you cannot put anything inside the first variable, inside the second variable, or the third variable. And so it gives an error. Need more than one value to unpack. Because one value is always present since it is the script name, the program name. Function. A function well, you already know, probably, is a named sequence of statements that serve to perform some computation, to print some data, to acquire some data, to do something. In Python, they must be defined before the place in which they are called. So you have to define the, the function, uh, my function, for example, and then after its definition, you can use it, not before. Python has a lot of uh, built-in function like int that we see before that convert something in string into an integer, and for example, the reverse that is str that converts a number, in this case a floating point number, into a string that is represented by this single quote. Now, before I said to you that uh, take this line and forget everything else. Why? Because this is a function. A function is defined by the def keyword, then the name of the function, the parentheses with uh, some arguments, if any, the colon at the end, the right indentation here, and in this case, this function, I call this function main, but it's not mandatory. And this function is used after this line. If underscore, underscore name, underscore, underscore, equal the string, underscore, underscore main, underscore, underscore, then call the main function. In the simple example I showed you before, the one that I wrote uh, directly, I do not use this. What is the difference according to you? The program works in the same way if I run the script, 
from here or without this definition, but only with this text. The script running from there, it will run in the same identical way. Who guesses the difference? This is similar to the main in C, in one sense. No one? Okay, um, the difference is, if uh, we see that, uh, for example here, I imported argv, that is a variable, but it could be also a function, from a module that is called sys. If uh, I would like to import name from this file, I cannot. If I import all this file, nothing will be executed because this line, since this line. This line say, when I run a script directly, only the script, then the parent of the script is the main, is Python itself. So execute everything that is here. And in this case, this is everything inside of it. If I import this, nothing will be executed. This instruction will be executed only if I explicitly call in my program that import this file, the main function. But directly, nothing will be executed. Without this, in the exact moment I will import this file, everything will be executed, even if I don't want. So the difference is this, essentially. And this is why in almost any of the script that we will see during this course, you will find if name equal equal main. To separate, to divide the script imported the execution of the script imported from the execution of a script launched standalone. Uh, a bunch of useful functions. Math function, located in the math module. For example, the logarithmic, logarithmic of 10. Or the sin function, here. I import the module, a collection of file, maybe only one, but I import a module, a collection of file, and then I can call the method and eventually and optionally the variable that are defined in that module. In this case, the module math exposed the log 10 function, the sin function, the pi uh, variable that represents the Pi number, 3.14, etc. In the same way, the string, strings have some function that are related to them. For example, len is a function that gets the length of a string. Lower gets a copy of the string or lowercase. Upper, the reverse, all uppercase. And the str function try to transform everything in parentheses into a string. So for example, course name, ambient intelligence, it's a string. The length of this is performed in this way. So print string length gives 20, that are the charters. I can put the lowercase everything and obtain this without the capital letter starting word. Uppercase everything. And I can use the string function to translate this 3.14 number, floating line number, is in a string that can be concatenated with the plus. The plus works between two strings or between two numbers, not between a number and a string. 
to print the value of pi is around 3.14. As we see, a new function can be defined with the def uh, keyword to enable the reuse of this function in several modules, in several parts of the, the program. Uh, and uh, I repeat, uh, the definition of function has to be present before it's called. So here, we define the circle area function that accepts a parameter that is a radius and return radius at the power of two multiplied by for the pi number taken from the math module and given a radius, calculate the, the area of the circle. Multiline comment, as I said before, can be represented by three single quote or three double quote, and they are also called doc, doc string. And inside a function, in this way, they represent the documentation of a function. So if I expose this script to other person that would like to use it and use the circle area function, they will see that the circle area function accepts a parameter that is a radius, and the description is compute the circle area given its radius. We'll not see the return, we'll not see every other operation, but the definition here, the parameter, the name of the parameter, and the description will be visible if you put a multi-line comment as the first element after the declaration of the other function. Module, finally, it's a way to logically organize code. <coughs> Consists of Python code, obviously, and they can define function, variable, constant, and so on. A, typically, the file containing in a module is called in the same identical way. The mat module will contain the mat file, the mind script. And we already met here them and we import them in two different ways. The first one is import module name, import math. We would like to import everything from math. If math defines 300 function and 10 variables, we import all of them in our program as we wrote them inside the program. If we import a module in this way, we need to call the function, the variable, by writing the module name dot the variable of the function to use. Otherwise, we can, we can also import something specific, only a function, only a variable, only one or two or three something, not everything, from a module. In this way, we not include all the modules inside of our program. We will include only a part of the program inside of our, of the module inside of our program. So in this case, I import only PI from math, the same PI as before, and I can use it directly as a, a variable that I defined a few lines before. And finally, another way is to import everything from a module that is equivalent to this one, but is not recommended to be used in Python. Python, obviously, can let us read and write files. They are function to do this. For reading or writing a file, you have to open the file with the open function, read the entire file, read the line, a single line of the file, or write, to write all the file, and then close the file in a way that's similar to what you do in C. So, for example, here we take the first parameter from command line, that is the file name, the first parameter after the script name, and I open that file name, the file, and I print it on the console. 
this open give this mate this object this txt in our case called txt and then the txt as a function associated to it named read print txt dot read means print everything after reading them from the txt element I opened before. To write a file is almost identical. The difference is that the file must be open in write mode, not in read mode, with this W. And then the file is contained in an object that is called target, in this case, with the truncate method function, we empty the file, and then we can write one line at a time something inside the file with this write function, and then we can close the file. Then Python has conditional control flow, equals to, not equals to, greater than, we already see most of them before. And it defines also Boolean operator and Boolean value. So the result of print two equal equals one, ask for is two equal to one, no, and so Python print false. Is two equal equal to two, yes, and so Python print true, and so on. Is string written this way equal equal to string written this other way, absolutely and so Python will print true. Notice that the equivalence between number or between strings is written in the same exact way. Boolean operator, not and or, written not and or, exactly, in, as in English. Uh, they are evaluated not from left to right, but they have a pre precedence, not is always evaluated before every, everything else. Then and is evaluated, and finally or is evaluated. So for example, two equal equal one and true give false, Boolean operator. Not false and true give true, because not false is true and then it performs the end between true and true that is true. Conditional statement, if. You already know if. It's written like a, a function, so keyword, condition, colon, indentation, and so on. In this case, example, people, 20 people, 30 cats, if people is minor than cats, print too many cats. They are doomed. If people is greater than cats, not many cats, the word is saved. If expression, colon, do something indented. A difference between uh, would you like, uh, would you know in uh, another language is the else if keyword. If we would like to see if people as less than cats, print something. Else if people are greater than cats, print something else. And else, in every other case, print we can decide. Notice that in Python, the elif, the else if is written elif as a, as a unique word without a part of the else. And then that elif and else has a colon at the end. As almost every conditional in almost every languages, the conditional can be chained and changed and they are um, checked in order before the first if, then the second, then the third, and so on. Python has the four for loops and the while for loops, incredible. And 
it presents also an interesting data structure that is the list. <laughs> the list is a data type for storing multiple items, a sequence of items, and you can assign an item to a list in this way. You have a variable that is equal to something in a square bracket, separated by a comma. This could be variable, number, string, whatever. For example, here the, we define three lists, the count, a list that contains one, two, three, four, five, a list of fruits, apple, orange, and so on, a list that's named change, that has one element that is a number, another that is a string, and then another that is a number, and then another that is a, stri a string, and so on. And the for loop is written in this way. There is the for keyword, the variable that we would like to use in the for, and in the in keyword, and the list we would like to, to operate on. So for number that is a variable in the count this, this list, print this is count percent d and so on. And it will print this is count one, two, three, four, five in five separate lines. The same as before for string, for fruit that is a variable, temporary variable here, in fruits list, the same as before. And we can also mix the things because type on Python is dynamically typed. So this E variable can be one time an integer, another time a string, another time a floating point for number and so on. To add something to a list, we can start with an empty list here, then cycle the number of time we would like to fill the list with an element. So for variable i in range zero to six. This is equivalent to say for i equal to zero, up to i is minor than six, i plus plus, in C, so, so perform this print and this function here six times from zero to five. And to add an element in a list to the end of a list, the function is named append. The append insert, insert the content of the i variable in the list elements, so the first time it will insert zero, then one, then two, and so on. Lists are mutable. They can change without being copied. This is different for tuple that are really similar to list, but they are, well, introduced by parentheses, not square bracket, and they are not mutable. They doesn't have a fixed length. At any time, you can add or remove an element to a list. They are also accessible by index as a string. Uh, letters D0, where letter is a, is a list with ABC, is the first element of the string. List can be concatenated with the plus symbol. The list A, and the list B will be concatenated in this way, and list can be slices with this strange operator that is square bracket, two points, square bracket. If we have the list C, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, and we write C, one, two point three, we will obtain a new list, D, in this way, that contains the first element, not the zero element, the element number one, so the second element, and the third element, the element number two, 
and not the third element. Slices can be used in this way without any number before and after the colon, with a number before and after that determine the starting point and the ending point, only with a number at the end or at the start, or without any number to, full, to make a full copy of the list. And it works with strings too, the slice operator. List function, append, add an element to the end of a list, sort, sort the element of the list from the low to the height, extend, include the element of a second list at the end of the element of the first list. To delay, delete an element from a list, we have two functions, the pop function that remove a specific element from, uh, uh, sorry, that remove the last element of a list, every single time the last element, and they remove, that they remove a specific element of the list, but only one. Then the del function let you to use slices to remove more than one element, knowing their indexes from a list. String are very similar to list. They are not equal, they can be converted one another. Given a string, you can convert it to a list with the list function. And you can also separate string in different words with a split method that divide the word according to a delimiter, that the default delimiter is the space. The inverse function is the, uh, of the split is join that uh, concatenate different word in a unique string. Another example, sorry. Uh, we have two list. One moment. Okay, we have two lists here. One is fruit, and then is favorite fruits that is equal to fruit. And then we add an element to the first list that is fruit, and then we print the result. If we run this, you will see that fruits are apple, orange, pear, apricot. Then we take fruits and put in favorite fruits, and we have the same elements. Then we add an element to fruit, only to fruit, not to favorite fruit. And so we have the, this banana at the end of the fruits list. But when we print the favorite fruit list, we see that there is this element also there. Why? Yeah, because they are pointers. For everybody that doesn't know what a pointer is, this is what happens. When you declare a list, you see that this list fruit has an arrow to another place with other four elements. When we add the favorite fruits, and we say that fruits is equal to favorite fruits, what happens for, for the real is that Python adds another arrow to the same identical place. Then when we add an element to the first list, since they share the same, uh, uh, the same portion of memory, 
they have the same content at the end. To avoid this problem, you have to perform a full copy of the list. <coughs> Three ways. First, using a slice. A full slice to return a full copy of the list. <coughs> Second way, use the list, the list function that perform a new list with the same content of the original list. Or we can take the favorite fruits as an empty list and we can extend it with the content of the fruits list. Between of these three, the favorite way, the most Pythonic is said way, is this one, list. Last thing, really. Another data structure, really important, is the dictionary. A dictionary is similar to a list, but is composed by two elements, not only one. In a list you have uh, a series, a sequence of single elements, or number of strings, one number, one string. In a dictionary you have a key and a value for each element. So for example, we can create a dictionary that contains the name of some states of the United States, some nation inside the United States, and their abbreviation. So we have one, two, and three elements in this map, in this dictionary. Then we can print, simply print state, we'll print all this dictionary, and to check if something is inside a dictionary, you can use this instruction. Oregon, that is the key here. These are three key, and these are three values of this dictionary. Is Oregon in states? Yes. So the result of this instruction is true. Then if you want to add some more state, this is the way we can do it. States, that is the dictionary, open square bracket, the key name equal the value name. So we can add here New York and Michigan with their abbreviation. And then we can print uh, the value of the value corresponding to the New York key. In this way, states open square bracket, New York. This is useful when you would like to associate different elements in a unique structure. Correlated element in not in two lists different, but in one variable. A dictionary can be used in for the for cycle in this way. For two variables, one for the key and one for the value, in states.items. Dot .items is the function that give the entire content of the state dictionary, all the key and all the values. There is the um, keys function that give all the keys, only the keys of the dictionary, <laughs> and there is the value that give all the value of the same dictionary. The clear function states.clear is written, rem empty the dictionary, then remove a single uh, key value pair, ln give the number of pair key value in a dictionary. The key in a dictionary should be unique. The value inside the dictionary, the value could be repeated. Last minute, here are a little bit of references and link that are also on the website. Before the question, on Monday in La Dispe, we will uh, do the first uh, lab, the first real lab on Python, on this thing. We'll try to make in practice uh, something of this operation, string, dictionary, list, uh, and so on. Uh, given your number and the number of computer in La Dispe, uh, you have to stay at least two for bench, at least two for computer. You can bring your own computer if you want. 
And if you, have a, if you don't have any question, we will see on Monday in La Dispia. Have a good night. <laughs>